Hello everyone, it's Navala here and I just want to give a quick shout out to these comments before getting into the video to show my appreciation. Make sure you comment below to have a chance at your comment being featured in the next video. Now to answer the question, what are dull or hex totems? And what is the cursed icon me? Well, you have probably noticed these strange objects that are three human skulls tied together throughout playing the game. When you walk up to one, you see this cleanse totem action up here, and cleansing one of these totems awards a whopping 1000 blood points in the bonus category, as well as some points towards your Lightbringer emblem. There are 5 totems that spawn on every map and are hidden throughout each one. But what are they exactly? Well, these are dual totems, and are a tool that killers utilize to power something called Hex Perks. Here's how it works. There are specific killer perks that start with the word Hex, and these perks are powered by a totem. Each totem only powers one Hex perk. A totem that powers a perk will be lit up and looks like this. So just think of each lit totem as a different perk. Cleansing a powered Hex totem will grant 1,500 blood points as well as progress towards your Lightbringer emblem. When a Hex totem is cleansed, everyone is notified of its destruction and the perk that was powered by that totem will be deactivated for the rest of the match and cannot be brought back. You can tell as killer which of your Hex perks has been destroyed by watching your perks in the bottom right corner because the perk will become unlit as soon as the totem powering it dies. For survivors, you better watch out for an angry killer after cleansing that totem. Now neither the killer or survivor can tell which totems are powering which hex perks. It's a guessing game. Something else important to note is that cleansing progress on dull or lit totems never saves and always resets to zero if you get off the totem even for just one second. So you better make sure you cleanse that totem all the way through on your first try. You can also tell when a hex perk is in play because whenever the hex perk is activated, the affected survivor or survivors will get a cursed stats effect on their screen. Additionally, the game will tell them the name and rarity of the perk that has been triggered on the left hand side of the screen. The cursed icon only comes off once the hex totem powering the effect is destroyed. If the killer has multiple hex perks, the cursed icon will remain until they are all destroyed. Currently, there are 7 hex perks in the game. Each hex perk, except for one, has this phrase in its description. The hex effects persist as long as the related hex totem is standing. So I won't be repeating that phrase. Now, let's take a look at those hex perks. Hex of Ruin, one of the most popular hex perks in the game that you've probably seen a ton of already, is a unique perk to the hag, which says all survivors are affected by Ruin. Good skill checks result in 3, 4, or 5% regression on the generator, and a great skill checks grant 0% progress bonus to the generator. Hex Devour Hope. A unique perk to the hag says, When a survivor is rescued from the hook at least 24 meters away, Devour Hope receives a token. At 2 tokens, gain a 3, 4, or 5% haste status effect. 10 seconds after hooking a survivor for a duration of 10 seconds. At 3 tokens, survivors suffer from the exposed status effect. The exposed status effect means the killer can put survivors into the dying state immediately from full health. I go over the exposed status effect more in my what is exposed video, which I will link here. And at 5 tokens, grants the ability to kill survivors by your own hand. Hex Third Seal, a unique perk to the hag, says hitting a survivor while the hex totem is active applies the blindness status effect. This effect applies to the last 2, 3, or 4 survivors hit. The blindness status effect prevents all survivors aura reading from working, even that caused by perks. I go over the blindness status effect more in my what is blindness video, which I will link here. Hex Thrill the Hunt. A base perk available to all killers says for each duel and hex totem on the map, gain a token. Gain 10% more blood points for actions in the hunter category for each token. Survivors' cleansing speeds are reduced by 4, 5, or 6% for each token. 
and you gain a notification when someone starts working on a hex total. The notification just looks like the standard notification bubble on the killer's point of view. As a survivor, if the killer has this perk, you definitely want to destroy all the dual totems to make it easier to destroy the hex totem before the killer can get to it while you cleanse it. Hex Huntress Lullaby A unique perk to the Huntress says survivors receive a 2, 4, or 6% regression penalty when missing any skill check. Each time a survivor is hooked, Huntress Lullaby grows in power. At 1 to 4 tokens, time between the skill check warning sound and the skill check becomes shorter. At 5 tokens, there is no skill check warning. Hex Haunted Ground. A unique perk to the spirit says two trapped hex totems will spawn in the trial. When one of the two trapped hex totems is cleansed by a survivor, all survivors suffer from the exposed stats effect for 40, 50, or 60 seconds. The remaining trapped hex totem immediately becomes a dull totem. Now this is a one perk I was talking about where it does not have the hex effects persist as long as the related hex totem is standing because it is uniquely different than the other Hex perks. And finally, Hex No One Escapes Death. A base perk available to all killers says, once the exit gates are powered, if there is a dual totem remaining on the map, this Hex is applied to it. While this Hex is active, survivors suffer from the exposed status effect, and your movement speed is increased by 2, 3, or 4%. Now an important thing to know about No One Escapes Death is that if you destroy all 5 dual totems before the gates are powered, then this perk will never become active because there are no dual totems around to become empowered. Remember, once a totem is cleansed, it is gone for good. Survivors do have some ways to help themselves find these elusive totems. They can use a rainbow map or a normal map with a red twine add-on, which allows the map to track killer belongings. The totems are part of the killer's belongings, and their auras will be shown to you in pink. The survivor perk Small Game, which is a base perk available to all survivors, says get an auditory warning when looking in the direction of the killer traps and totems in a 45 degree cone within a range of 8, 10, or 12 meters. Small Game has a cooldown of 15, 12, or 10 seconds each time it activates so survivors can use this to help themselves find hidden totems. Detective Tap's unique perk, Detective's Hunch, says, unlocks the potential in one's aura ring ability. When completing a generator, the auras of generators, chests, and totems within 32, 48, or 64 meters are revealed to you for 5 seconds. If you are holding a map that can track objectives, Generators revealed by Detective's Hunch are added to the map, so this perk also reveals totem locations to the survivor who has it. Even though the perk says it only adds generators to the map, it also adds totems as well. And finally, this last perk doesn't help you find totems, but it does interact with them. Inner Strength, one of Nancy's unique perks, says each time you complete a totem cleanse action, Inner Strength activates. If you are already afflicted by the broken status effect, Inner Strength does not activate. While Inner Strength is active, hiding inside a locker for 10, 9, or 8 seconds while injured automatically heals you from injured to healthy. Inner Strength becomes deactivated as soon as it has successfully triggered. It does not matter if you cleanse a Dole or Hex totem to activate Inner Strength, any totem will do. And that's everything about Dull and Hex totems. If this video has helped you out, let me know by leaving a like below. If you have any additional questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe for more helpful content. And if you want to support the channel even more, click that join button. Thank you for watching, and as always, good luck out there in the fog, and see ya next time.